Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, and today we are going to do some FET interactive simulations. So FET is built by the University of Colorado Boulder, and I'm telling you that because we need to give credit where credit is due, and they have some really neat simulations for all areas of science, and even some math, and you can do it on your iPad or tablet, your Chromebook, Okay, and so I'm showing you this because it might be something where you're in math class and you're like, wow, I just still do not get fractions. I just need to see a little bit more about fractions. You know, maybe you're doing vector addition. Maybe we're working on resistance when you get into physics. So there are some neat things here to just kind of check out at some point if you'd like. And they go all the way up to high school. So least squares regressions, talking about area, talking about ooh, molecular polarity. We might have to use that one later, okay? So even I need to spend some time looking through there. Now if you're thinking, yeah, really, Mrs. KJ, I'm never going to look through these. That's okay, too, um, because I'm going to give you some specific ones that we're going to work on throughout chemistry. And the reason for that is sometimes, quite honestly, it's really hard to picture everything that's going on in an atom because you can't see it. And so we want to use some of these simulations to just kind of get a better idea in our mind. And that's super important because I just cannot say enough how certain things you're going to need to understand all year. And if you're struggling with them now, you need to come get help. You need to do some extra practice. We need to take care of that so that the rest of the year isn't such a struggle. All right. And that being said, I know some of you have A's. Awesome job. You're doing great. And keep it up. All right. So when you go to the FET website today, we're going to be working on our general chemistry. And we are going to simply build an atom. When you click on build an atom, you are going to have to hit click download and then it's going to pop up probably down here it doesn't mind otherwise you might have to go to show all downloads and it says build in atom hmm. see there you go build an atom underscored en probably for english and mine has the four because i've downloaded it a bunch of times already and then once you click on it it's going to look like this so there are three different sections and i'm going to walk you through them and remember you should be spending an hour a day on chemistry so this is what i expect you to spend your hour on today so let's take a look at what we have going on on the screen all right i zoomed in a little bit for you so the first thing we want to do is check something so we want to check net charge do you know what net means in chemistry Net is not like a butterfly net, it means total. So if you notice, our charge right now is right in the middle, it's at zero. Depending what we do, we could get a positive charge or a negative charge. What is the charge when the atom is neutral? When the atom is neutral, the net or total charge is zero. I also want you to expand the mass number. And I want you to click down here where it says stable, unstable. Ooh, so we just talked about that. How are we going to easily make an atom unstable? By adding too many, or not enough, neutrons. All right, so we have a bucket of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And up here, it's going to tell you how many are in your atom. So right now, there's nothing listed because we just have a blank model. And this is the Bohr model. And so in the middle, what do we call the middle of the atom? We call it the nucleus. And which of these are in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. And these circles over here are going to be our orbitals. And that is where what goes? The electrons. And if you notice, we can also do the cloud model, which is more realistic. But for now, I only want to do orbitals. Because until you have a really firm grasp on what the elements look like and why, Bohr's orbital model is definitely the way to go. And we're going to be using that a lot coming up. But I, I really felt like all we've been doing lately is numbers. And sometimes when all you do is numbers, it's real easy to kind of glaze over. Hmm. And so hopefully this will help put some of it into perspective. Okay, so let's get going. So let's build an atom. Protons. Okay, look at everything that happened. First of all, it shows me that I have one proton in my atom. It tells me what element it is. Because with one proton, I now have hydrogen. 
It also tells me that the mass number is 1, since each proton weighs 1 AMU, and that's all I got. My mass number is 1. It also tells me my charge. Every proton is positive. Since all I have in my atom is one positive proton, my charge is 1. And it's an ion. Now an ion we're going to get to next. An ion means an atom with a charge. So if your atom is not neutral, it is an ion. So atoms are either neutral or an ion. And in this case, it's positive because we have more positives and we have no negatives. All right, so what happens if we add a second proton? What's going to happen? Hit pause, think it through, see if you know this answer. Okay, I want you to think and say, okay, well, one more is going to get added up here. Is it still going to be positive? What will the charge be? What will the element be? What will the mass number be? So hit pause and think over all that stuff. Okay, so when we add our second one, we now have helium. So we have two protons, which means it's helium. It's still a positive ion because all we have are two positives. Oh, look at that. Our charge is plus two. Our mass number, since each proton weighs one AMU, is two. And if we look at it, it's pretty unstable, right? It's bouncing around. It is not happy. Okay, so let's back up. Let's go back to hydrogen. And even though all it took was a click of a mouse, to do this in real life, this is what happens in the sun. The sun. That is how much power, how much heat, how much pressure we need for this to actually happen in real life. All right, so it's pretty awesome that you live in the age of computers. We can just do simulations. All right, so let's look at our hydrogen. Um, I don't want it to be positive. I want it to be neutral. So what am I going to add? I'm going to have to add an electron, right? Because now I have positive one for a proton, negative one for an electron, one minus 1 equals 0. So I'm neutral. No big deal. I'm still hydrogen because why? I only have one proton. My mass is still 1. How did that happen? Oh yeah, because electrons have an AMU of 0, right? And sometimes I talk like that to kind of help you learn how to think through chemistry because thinking through chemistry is going to help you so much more than just trying to memorize a million things. You want to think it through. So sometimes I talk through my thought process to kind of help model that and help you learn how to think through chemistry. And if you already do, awesome. And if not, you know what? That's a skill that you're going to use. Okay, let's be honest. Most of you are not going to have to deal with this in real life after high school, right? So if you're thinking, yeah, so why am I doing it? Chemistry is all about learning how to think things through, which is a skill no matter what you do. Whether you are staying home and taking care of your children, which is awesome, whether you are going to be working as a welder. My brother's a welder. He's got to think through problems all the time. Whether you are going to be a professional snowboarder, yeah, even if you're going to be a professional snowboarder, you're like, oh, wow, you're stretching, Mrs. KJ. I am a little bit. I tried to think of what's the biggest stretch I can come up with. If you're a snowboarder, you still got to think through problems. It doesn't matter what you do. You have to think through problems. So chemistry is about learning how to think through problems. All right, so let's think through some more atoms. So our hydrogen is stable, and it's got an electron. All right, what about if we add a neutron? What is that going to change? Is that going to change the element? No, because only adding or subtracting protons changes the element. Is that going to change the charge? No, because neutrons are neutral and have no charge. Is it going to change the mass number? Yes. What's my mass number going to become? My mass number is going to become 2. Woohoo! Because each one of these weighs 1 AMU. All right, and we're stable. Okay, hydrogen's pretty happy. How many neutrons do you think I need to add before hydrogen becomes unstable? Eh, just one more. And I could add a whole bunch. You can see my mass number continues to increase, and it's still stable. Now, in real life, you're never going to get this. This is so unstable, it will never happen. Things are going to break down. You're going to have neutrinos, positrons, all kinds of things you don't have to worry about yet. But here's something interesting. What could I add to make this stable? So i got to add something. What do you think I would need to add to make this stable? I need to add protons or electrons and why? 
So being stable is all about the nucleus. So I'd have to add some protons. So many protons I need to add before it is stable. Ah, boron. So boron has one, two, three, four, five protons. So that's why they list them up here, because sometimes it's hard to count once you get a nice big nucleus. One, two, three, four, five, six neutrons. So oh, more neutrons. And let's look what else we know about boron. Okay. So I know that it's over here on the periodic table. In case you haven't noticed, they go in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next row, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Next row. And there's a reason for these gaps, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, so my charge is plus four. Hmm, so let's look at why that is. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five protons, so that's plus five. And I have one electron, so 5 minus 1 equals 4. My mass number is 11. How do I have that? Well, I have 5 protons plus 6 neutrons. Each of them weighs 1. So 5 plus 6 is 11. So let's, right now it says it's a positive ion. Remember, it's either neutral or it's an ion. And right now it's more positive, so it's a positive ion. Let's make this neutral. How many total electrons will I need to make this atom neutral? Well, if I just add the 1, now I'm still at positive 3. You can see that these cancel out. So keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And, oh, I'm neutral. Now, if you noticed, I tried putting it over here, and it automatically went over here. The first orbital is tiny. Only two electrons fit in there. The rest of them for this simulation are going to go in the next orbital. And that's coming up in the next couple lessons. So that's another reason why I wanted to just kind of give you a little preview here. All right, so my net charge. I have equal number of protons and electrons. So my charge is zero. What's my charge going to be if I add another electron? Well, it's going to be negative one because, look, I have one more negative than I have positive. So now I have a negative ion of boron. What's my charge going to be if I add a second electron? Well, now I have two more electrons than I have protons, so I have two more negatives, so I have negative two. Now what's my charge going to be? Negative three, negative four, negative five. All right. And in real life, that's not going to happen, and we're going to talk about why coming up pretty soon. But you can at least get an idea for how this positive and negative works, which is a huge part of chemistry. Huge, huge, huge. Like top five huge things in chemistry is understanding if your charge is going to be positive or negative and positive and negative how many. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I still don't get it, that's okay. We haven't had the lesson. This is just kind of more of a play around to get some visuals so you can get a general idea. All right. So uh, what, do we, what can we add to make boron unstable? Add some more neutrons. Oh, only one more neutron. Wow, that's all it took for boron. Okay. What about if I wanted to start over? Click here. All right. So I'm going to give you some things to guide you through. The next one, I click down here. This shows you the same idea, but it shows you more in the periodic table format. Okay, so just to kind of check through. Oh, I have helium. Now, this periodic table has the atomic number on the bottom and the mass number on top. That's okay. The mass number is always the bigger number. And what do you think this number is? That's my charge. So I have a plus one charge. Now I have a zero charge. Now I have a negative one charge because I'm adding electrons. The more electrons you have, the more negative you become. So think of electrons as bad. The more bad stuff you have, the more negative you are. Or think about money, and electrons are your debt. You owe money. Wow, the more debt you have, the more in the hole you are. And then you have some games. This is what I want you to do. Try the games. Make sure you do all of them. Remember, you owe me an hour of your time, so you still got 45 minutes left. Um, when you choose something, you have to also choose if it's neutral or an ion, and then hit check. If you get it wrong, you have to hit try again. Okay, and then you can show the answer after the second time. 
So I want you to go through these games and I want you to get good scores on these games. So if it takes a while, try again.